chapter four in your book is your health is in your hands. And I love this. You say, you know, we know how to prevent the vast majority of cancers. The only problem is, is that people don't like the answer, which is vegetables. <laughs> so, so, uh, what do you say to people that say they don't like vegetables? Like you just say, Hey, learn how, <laughs> or just live close to a hospital. <laughs> yeah. You know how these people like to live on the ski slope because they love to yeah. go skiing, right? Well, people who just want to eat conventionally should just get these condos and they can take the, the trams or the ski lifts right into the hospitals with their doctor's appointments and stuff. Oh my gosh. That's right. But in any case, I mean, obviously it's just a joke, a silly joke, but the point is, is that you have, you can't expect to have good health if you don't eat the foods as required by the human body. And obviously there are other things that cause ill health beside food. You know, we get, could get chemical exposure. We could have genetic defects. We could have other things that are, that, but, it, but why not control what we can control? Why not put, um, you know, put things in our body that's going to maximize our chance for the healthiest life and the happiest life possible? Because what we eat and affects our physical health also affects our mental and emotional health as well. Yeah. Well, and in so, your fourth, yeah. yeah, I'm sorry, go ahead. No, that's it. I, I, okay, yeah. And your fourth principle, um, is avoid disease causing substances. And there's a lot out there, uh, isn't there? Yeah. And so when you say disease causing substances, can you give us a couple examples that you want people to like stay away from and, and be, be conscious of? Well, the two things that come to my mind most powerfully are what Americans eat, which is um, commercial baked goods that are made of white flour and sugar, which then has no, doesn't contribute any nutrients to the body. So in order to convert it to energy, the body has to strip nutrients out of the body. In the stripping of nutrients to convert it into energy, you form more free radicals, reactive oxygen species, and you build up what I call toxicosis. So as you eat foods like this, it not only more readily shunted to fat storage, but it also strips the body of nutrition and builds up more toxic waste product in the body. Metabolic waste your own body produces when you're eating these foods. And fried foods are particularly toxic in that when you heat oils at high temperature, it forms, it makes for carcinogenic and genotoxic changes that can affect your DNA and affect your cells to um, decay at a, at a rapid rate. So yeah, there are a lot of things people just take in. We're talking about barbecue, processed meats, fried foods, commercial baked goods, all these things that are exceedingly dangerous for a person's survival. And so people just put things in their mouth, mouth that are so destructive, it's like shooting up with drugs just to get pleasure. And without any um, awareness or indication that, there's, that, there's, that these foods are self-destructive. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Well, conversely, you say that the an anti-cancer solution, and you mentioned greens, but you have an, a great acronym, it's G-BOMBS. So what exactly are your G bombs that you want people to get in into the their bodies every day? Yeah, G bombs is a nice term I think, you know, that I, it stands for G uh, G B O M B S greens, beans, onions, mushrooms, berries and seeds, like flax seeds, chia seeds, hemp seeds, sesame seeds. So and the greens refer to a mixture of greens, both lettuce and both solid, you know, above ground substances that grow that are green, both cruciferous and non-cruciferous. We want people to eat a salad every day and cook greens every day, both things in their diet for nutritional diversity. Um, so, and then we want them to eat some onion family raw as well as cooked too, you know, like scallion or onion in your salad if possible, because you have enhanced absorption of the organic or increased formation and absorption of the anti-cancer organosulfate compounds when you're chewing and crushing these um, allium family vegetables in your mouth. And then most mushrooms mostly cooked. And then of course, um, fruit, and which includes the, the ones that are highest in um, flavonoids and anthocyanins, which are berries, which are super, and cherries and pomegranates and things that are, you know, these the what fruits that we have available to us. Um, and we get, and we have, we can eat frozen fruit. I mean, there's nothing wrong with frozen. You can eat frozen pomegranate arrows and frozen blueberries and frozen raspberries, make it less expensive. And they, and if you can't afford organic, 
the frozen is, you know, sometimes the organic, and especially in the East Coast, when it's grown in the West, time it gets there, it's moldy, you know, because they, they spray the non-organic ones with the fungicides after they're picked. So they don't, but if you um, can't afford organic or you can't get fresh organic, then buy frozen because it's much less expensive and you take out of the frozen pack just what you need and you put the rest back in the freezer again so it doesn't have to go bad. So we have, we can get exposed to have a wide variety of these foods, even in the winter time. And if we could include frozen vegetables and frozen fruits in our diet too. Yeah. Um, what about, when was the last time you had a banana? Uh, banana. <laughs> a few days ago. Okay. Um, yeah. Probably I mashed a banana into something. I was making my wife some cereal and I mashed a banana into it, uh, into the, prunes and banana in the grain and the flax seed and the thing with the soy like I was made a few days ago. Right. But yeah, we were talking about the recent um, uh -huh. studies that show that bananas decrease the absorption of the beneficial compounds from berries. So we're trying to not to put bananas in the meal and the, usually the breakfast meals when we have our berries. And so lately we haven't been using banana as much um, with the breakfast. So we get the mo maximum absorption of those nutrients from berries, but not to be so fanatical that you can't ever eat a banana with berries. You can't even, you know, everything, everything we do doesn't have to be perfect as long as we're trying not to eat. So these self-destructive foods, we don't have to maximize every food we eat, but we don't want to eat things that we know are so dangerous either. You know, I mean, I would imagine that if you're eating uh, a nutritarian, <clears throat> the nutritarian way yeah. that um, you're doing, you know, you're hitting such a, a grand slam home run that if you have a banana instead of berries, that you're probably going to be fine. Right. Right. Um, and you're also a fan uh, of soybeans and you mentioned how they're fantastic to basically fight off cancer. Yes, I do. And I also suggest that the most, these important scientific research articles of the last decades from 1918 to 2022, has shown that increasing amount of animal protein in a person's diet is linked to shorter lifespan. That we know, many studies corroborate that. Corroborate means we have other studies done by different researchers on different populations showing the same things over and over again, that more animal protein leads to shorter lifespans. Those same studies show that increasing plant protein leads to longer lifespan. And, and especially as we age, not paying attention to protein and I'm warning here people who are on plant-based like fruitarian diets, as they may be good for their middle ages when they're athletic and their protein bioavailability and absorption is high, but as they get to be 78 or you're 90, if they don't start to eat hemp seeds and soybeans and green vegetables and beans and things that, so what we're saying here that eating these plant foods that are higher in protein are linked to longer lifespan. And that means that knowing which plant foods have high protein, and of course, almost all of them do except for fruit, we're talking about intact whole grains, beans, greens, vegetables, and nuts and seeds. Those five categories of foods are all protein adequate. Mm. And which means a diet, especially as we age, could be too high in fruit, which would lower the protein content of our diet. Or putting oil on our food. Putting oil on our food. If I take, like most Americans, consuming 500 calories a day, if my calories are 1,500 a day, and I take 500 into oil, I've just lowered my protein content in my diet by like 15 grams because I could have eaten those calories that had protein like by eating soybeans or nuts or seeds or something that have protein in, mixed in those 500 calories. Mm -hmm. So people don't realize how when they eat sugar and oil, not only do they get this caloric rush, which makes them addicted to eating those foods because it spikes the calories in the bloodstream so high, but they're also reducing the plant protein, they're reducing the protein in their diet. Mm -hmm. which is why people on like vegan diets in England might have more hip fractures and poor musculature because they're eating so much oil and sugar and white flour and they diluted the protein because they're not eating whole plant foods that contain the full protein matrix. Mm -hmm. um, you're the only fatty foods you say that fight cancer are, are nuts and seeds. So uh, what are, what are some of the nuts and seeds that you're most fond of? Right. I'm saying that the American diet gets its fat from animal fats and oils. And one of the hallmarks of a nutritarian diet is that our fat comes from nuts and seeds and avocados, not from oils and animal products. Right. And then the ones I'm most fond of, I try to strive that people try who, whatever nuts and seeds they are eating. Let's say they're eating two ounces a day. Then I want at least one ounce to be from 
the nuts and seeds that are high in omega-3. That to be like half their nut and seed intake ideally to be from walnuts, flax seeds, chia seeds, and hemp seeds. So if the recipe calls for like a cashew sauce, which is really delicious and creamy, or a cashew icing on a, you know, then we take out like half the cashews and put in half hemp seeds. So at least has some more favorable omega-3, omega-6 balance. Because we know like, for example, that with regard to stabilizing the heart arrhythmias, that ALA, which is the A-alpha-linic acid from the, the short chain omega-3 in flax seeds and walnuts, have beneficial stabilizing effects on the heart from arrhythmia like atrial fibrillation. 